Hello and welcome to White Horse Music TV! Um, my name is Richard Bedinner and I am co-owner of this wonderful shop with my lovely wife Michelle Bedinner who is not holding the camera today. That is a music stand. That music stand is not my wife. Let's continue. So today um, I am showing you some really good cellos. Bronwyn is a person and Bronwyn uh, is interested in seeing some um, cellos around the $10,000 mark um, in Australian dollars. So um, first off, I'm going to be showing you something new. It's very exciting. I get very excited when I get a new cello to show off. This one is called a Solist cello. There we go. Now, the Solist cellos have been sourced by one of our suppliers and they have really interesting look to them. It's sort of like, so they've used wood on the front there, which is very interestingly figured. So you can see all the little nuts and knurls and, <laughs> is that the correct terminology? But um, it looks interesting to me. It sort of has a bit of picasso iness about it. Just the, the varnish seeps into those little interesting crevices and makes a, a beautiful looking cello. So that's the front and here is the back. It's beautiful stripy maple there. And as you can see, it's sort of antiqued. I would call that um, moderately antiqued in that they've, you know, put the odd little scratch around the place and they've faded the wood to the flanks there to make it look like it's been used for a certain amount of time. The varnish around here um, has a little bit of old French cello-ness to it. So that's a beautiful looking cello. And they use European woods, which is a really good thing. Um, so this one is the first one. What I'll be gonna do is I'll show you all the different cellos and then I'll, um, uh, and then I'll play them because they're cellos, why not play them? So that's cello number one, which is a soloist cello. This next one here is a Heinrich Gill W3 cello. And you see the, the varnish, the look of that one is very different. I'll bring it back a bit so you can see it as a, a whole thing. There you go. And this is also very moderately antiqued. I would see, say even more moderately. So it's like slightly faded to the flanks there. Very beautifully made. I can always trust Heinrich Gill. Oh, look at that wood. They have one of the biggest stores in the world of aged tone wood. They've been making cellos since 1952. And this particular model, the W3, has a really nice sort of nutty brown look to it. And you can really see the wood and feel the um, feel the grain of the wood under the varnish. You know, sometimes cellos, when they're too heavily varnished, you can't feel the wood like that. And to me, that says, okay, this wood, this varnish is not too thick. It's not going to, you know, grab the wood and stop it from vibrating the way you want it to. So that's beautiful. That's Heinrich Gill W3. And now, cello number three is a J Hyder um, Eurowood Stradivarius cello. So basically with J Hyder, they have, um, oh, that's very beautiful looking. They have uh, a Chinese wood model of the Le Anxian cellos. And then they have the Euro wood models of the La Anxian cellos. And as you can see, that is sort of more antique than the others, I would say. Like um, there's, even under the tailpiece, there's um, black marks where the original cello that they're copying may have had the, the tailpiece collapse on it a little bit and, and cause little marks. So they've, they've gone the extra distance to make the cello very antiqued and really 
big solid wear pattern on the back from where it's been sitting in a case for 300 years and a big wear pattern here so interesting yeah beautiful looking cellos and they have been all set up by a genius called Richard at Whitehorse Music he's a very intelligent man um, yeah so I have made the the bridges for each one use the best quality bridge blank that I can get that's an old bear deluxe bridge and carved one myself and then made a new sound post inside for each one and planed the fingerboards on all of them and and um, refitted the pegs there's a huge amount of work that goes into them and each one of these cellos will sound completely different in different shops depending on which luthier sets up the cello so it's interesting there's so many sort of aspects to what makes a good sound of a cello you can have a great cello that's poorly set up and it won't sound very good you can have a great cello which is set up with good parts and uh, really well set up with horrible strings and it won't sound very good. You can have a bad cello that's set up with very good strings and a good bridge. It'll sound okay. Anyway, there's all sorts of combinations to, you know, what can make the sound good or not so good on a cello. And, and also, the, it's not just good and not so good. Like, you know, you can turn it, like if, if I wanted to with the sound post, I could take a cello which is a bit bright and and not deep enough on the bottom and add depth to it or you know take one that's really sort of um you know muffled and very very deep but very muffled on the bottom and i can brighten that up there's all sorts of the interesting things you do i am talking too much i'm going to play these cellos okay so what i'll do is i'll play them in the same order that i presented them so this one is the soul list and it's a particular model of Solist. I think it's called the Fachiri, Fahiri. My goodness gracious, I didn't bring my glasses with me, but let's not hold that back. Look into the description, we'll see which model it is. <laughs> well prepared. Okay, now I'll play this one. extremely happy with this cello when I set it up because uh, it's the first one of these ones that I've had um, it's really deep and it's extremely even across the strings you know nothing sort of stands out too much it doesn't have a big strong A string and a weak C or anything like that and it's clear across the strings which is really nice I have used the same string set on each of them the two Larson solo and two spiral tungsten on the bottom because it's, it's you know one of my favorite sets for professional cellos um, but this one really really works well with that set it sort of just sounds perfect <laughs> And um, yeah, it rings quite nicely as well. Nice? Nice. Okay, let's try cello number two. So I'll, I'll play them each individually and I'll talk about each one and then at the end I'll play each one straight after each other so you can hear them without having to listen to me prattle on. So this one is the Heinrich Gill W3 cello. the strings when I transitioned into those top two strings I could st I could hear everything else that I'd played still ringing as I was going going up the, the cello so that is a really beautiful thing the 
amazing aged tone wood that they use I think really helps with that. Um, it was also very deep, I would say it has at least as much depth as the Solist, so similar amount of depth. Slightly different character to it, it's, you know, it looks sort of like quite um, walnutty, quite woody and it sounds a little bit woody. Um, beautiful cello as well. Ooh. It's going to be a tough comparison for Bronwyn, who is looking at these cellos. So, the last one, J. Hyder Eurowood Stradivarius model, Le Anxien. Lots of parts to that name. <laughs> as to whether it has slightly more depth again than the Heinrich Gill. It's very, very deep down the bottom and it rings really well. I don't think it rings quite as well as the Heinrich Gill. The Heinrich Gill is the winner in the, in the sustain resonance sort of aspect. Um, it also has a lot of woodiness about the sound as well. Um, but for power, I think possibly it very, very slightly pips the other two. So it's a very powerful sounding cello. Oh, but there's not that much in it as far as the power goes because they're all, you know, they are all powerful cellos in this price range. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to play this one and then the gill and the soliest, and I'll play them one after another without talking lots and lots and lots and lots. <laughs> biggest sounding. Um, it was biggest sounding and then I would say the Heinrich Gill and the Solist, Solist were just behind in terms of power. Definitely there was a big difference when I went to the Gill as far as the sustain. The Gill, Heinrich Gill had beautiful sustain throughout the notes which was really amazing. Um, and then the Solist to me has a clearer sound than the other two. So they all have their thing power, sustain, and clarity. Whoa, Bronwyn has a difficult choice. Please tell her down below which one she should get. She won't even have to watch the video. She can just look in the comments. You won't even have to look at the video. She'll just be, she'll, she'll trust you guys. Just tell her down below. Thank you very much for watching. Um, and please advise Bronwyn and tell her to buy all of them. Thank you very much. Enjoy. <laughs> 